inclement weather today. I say that, I don't actually know what the word inclement means. What does the word inclement mean? Inclement weather. Unpleasantly cold or wet. It's not especially cold out there. It is wet, however. It is moist. Fucking moist. Um, and it's fucking muggy. But no, it's not cold. Went for a walk down along the Le Promenade uh, today. and thought I'd actually go onto the, meet, onto the beach, which I don't normally do. Mainly because uh, Long Dog will find something very unpleasant to roll in. Uh, dead fish. Human Todd. Uh, more human Todd on, on Hove Beach than there should be. I mean, in an ideal world, there would be none. But realistically, there's going to be some. Um, and if suddenly Long Dog disappears, you know something's up. Like there's something will be tucked down next to a groin. Yeah, it should be going at it. Bad, bad times. Um, but yeah, the sea looked very inviting today. Very just calm. Almost it was whispering into your ear. Join us. Join us, Feathery King. Join our watery depths. Become a king of the sea. Sit at Poseidon's side and toss him off under the table. Come on. Enter. I imagine it's horrible, though. And it, you know, it's bright and sea. It's tarnished with the residue of the fornication and the sin and the general toxicity of, um, of liberalism. You know, it pours out of every pore, of every body in town, floods down into the sea, washing everything uh, away in its path, you know, before it makes it to the to the greeny, bluey, grey, watery depths, and kills fish. So, you got to watch out for that, guys. If, you know, if you're going to do the whole liberal thing, you've got to try and keep it in. Like one of those, uh, like in, I don't know if you remember the film The Full Monty. Um, it was about some northern lads getting their kit off for, for Bant. And one of them sat in a shed, uh, cling filming himself up while eating a Snickers. It's a bit like that, I guess. Um, or you could do that whole vac bed situation, which I advise you really not to not to Google. Uh, that's vac bed, uh, which I'm telling you not to Google. Vac bed. Don't look at the Pornhub links. It, I. <sighs> couple of videos recently that have stuck with me. I got one on a WhatsApp group of a man who dogs a, a dog, a large dog, a pit bull of some kind, had bitten his cock off. He was being held down. I guess it was it, it sort of it had a sort of ISIS feel to it. That's bad. Just delete that immediately and leave the group. You gotta be careful these days, even at the ripe old age of thirty five, having spent so much of my life in nightclubs still some things can shock me having been to the volks literally hundreds of times still there are sites that can you know almost cause me to have to take a knee you know even having spent so many hours in trickstar radio and seeing the horrors and the true sin and, and and despair and just the real stark visceral face of humanity morning jay <laughs> staring back at you like an unwashed anus it's even still after all of that there are some things that will move me almost to tears not quite to tears though I, I have been significantly jaded enough that the ability to cry has been sort of beaten out of me again by the harrowing horrors that I've seen at the hands of Trickstar Radio <laughs> ladies and gentlemen it's, what day is it today? Thursday. Fuck my old boots. This week is going fast. Ask us that. Uh, I was away on Monday, so it's not even a full week. But look, we motor on. The wheels of time are in motion. The penis of time is entering uh, the anus of reality. And we must, we must e ejaculate our time spunk into the universe before we die. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes. Steady job and a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Well, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, 
that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy and that's funny and it's 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 kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that it, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you and if you don't play that out you actually fail Ladies and gentlemen, we're at the Coffee Memes on Threshold, diggity-diggity-diggity.fm, diggity.fm, that's how we're doing it now, I'm getting the URL changed, the domain changed to Threshold, there will be a dot there, but it'll be a silent dot, Threshold, diggity, oh no, be one word, Threshold, diggity 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 dot fm um, Guys... I uh, don't really know what's in the news today, as I got in late, and I've just I've got a lot of tabs open here um, of stuff from yesterday um, that that does need to be covered. Some good bits, sure. Um, Learner driver arrested for turning up to driving test in stolen car. That's good. That's cool. <laughs> nice. Wow. Um, bear attacks trainer who forced him to push wheelbarrow like human. Well. You know, buy the ticket, take the ride. Um, Adelaide, named as meth capital of the world. Wow, great news for Australia. Meth capital of the world in Adelaide. I went to Adelaide uh, on a tour many, many moons ago. I toured Australia with the Ministry of Sound. Um, I mixed the Ministry of Sound, Sound of Dubstep album uh, for the Australian uh, Ministry of Sound. I don't know how much they have to do with the UK's ministry whether or not it's a sort of international ministry or whether or not they're somewhat separate, you know, sort of splinter cells, independent, decentralised um, ministry. I don't know. Anyway, I went to Adelaide. I uh, thought it was a nice enough place. I saw Nick Cave there. Um, he was performing in the same venue as me, but the night after, I thought, that's a bit of fun. Wow, I sure have made it. Turned out I was basically playing in, I guess you could consider it the bar, but it was like shitter. <laughs> and he was playing in the in the sort of main <laughs> large auditorium. Um, so in a way, it was the same venue. He was doing a grind amount of things. It was fantastic. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, U.S. House of Representatives passes bill making animal cruelty a federal felony. Okay, that's not really coffee. That's cool, but not really coffee and memes fodder, is it? A uh, YouTube pickup artist jailed for threatening and abusive behaviour towards women. Oopsie. Man accidentally blows up entire lawn trying to get rid of cockroach infestation. Um, Aussie YouTuber charged with assault over air horn prank. As you go around air horning people, wow, well, just pff, yeah, really, really going for high level humour there. Let's just go to air horn, scare people with that. Brilliant, absolute, absolute classic. Uh, police hunt for couple who kept having sex on train. Just kept at it. Good, good. There's a few of these recently. Uh, school asks students to wear boxes on head uh, to stop cheating. Bit of fun. Uh, passengers wrap drunk man in cling film after he tries to open plane door. Where'd you get the cling film from? Who's on a plane with cling film? That, why is that my main concern? <laughs> Weird. Johnson and, rough times for Johnson & Johnson. Not that I feel sorry for Big Pharma. Um... You know, I don't feel sorry for Big Pharma, uh, Big Tech, Big Broccoli, um, Big Jungle, you know, which is really the drum and bass industrial complex. Johnson & Johnson recalls baby powder in USA after trace amounts of asbestos found. God, that really is a sort of brass eye. This is the last, <laughs> this, this is exactly what we didn't want to happen. Accidentally putting asbestos in the baby powder. After recently having the ordeal of having to pay out Billions in damages to the lad who took your antidepressant and grew tits. <sighs> Fucking hell. Bet, like, most expensive tit job in the world. Billion, The billion pound tit job. I should have called that story. Um, listen, there are people giving themselves tits for craft ale. You know, cut a fucking multiple billion doing it by accident. <sighs> Sweet deal. I say this, I appreciate it. It was probably quite harrowing. Um, pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson has issued a voluntary recall. Voluntary, well, they're not going to come around your house and take it from you. Recall of one of 
one lot of talcum powder after the US Food and Drug Administration discovered on Friday that it contained trace asbestos, which causes cancer. Yes. You just can't believe that they used to have asbestos filters and gas masks. That is just... That is very unlucky, isn't it? It just doesn't get more unlucky than that. It turns out... the the I mean, that is bitter irony. That the one thing that you thought was saving you was in fact killing you in the long term. Fuck me, that is rough. Um, thousands of claimants say that Johnson & Johnson's baby powder caused them to get the disease. Fuck, that is, that's rough. I mean, they had said that the trace was pretty fucking tiny. 0. 0.00002. Um, that subtrace. Yep. Well, I'm certainly no medical expert, although I'm always happy to give my opinion on stuff, and I do listen to podcasts. So that makes me pretty much, well, probably better than a doctor, I would guess. You know, doctor that isn't weighed down, you know, with the inconvenient weight of, you know, formal education. Uh, Snoop Doggy Dog, the Dogmeister, uh, the, the, do- the dog, let's call him the dog, the dog pays a guy $50,000 a year to roll blunts. That's a sweet job. Um, the super rich and successful... For the super rich and successful, hiring someone to do their tedious errands can actually be financially advantage. advantageous. Sorry, Notorious weed smoker, Snoop Doggy Dog, even hires a full-time blunt roller, it turns out. Speaking on the Howard Stern Show, uh, alongside fellow pot enthusiast Seth Rogen, uh, Snoop Doggy Dog uh, was asked why he required a blunt roller, to which he simply replied, Earth time. What, don't have time for the question? Don't have time to roll the blunts? Talk to me, Snoop Dogg. What's the situation? Um, Rogan then uh, heaped praise onto the rapper's employee who he had encountered when hanging with Snoop Doggy Dog in the past and said the guy had a knack of appearing with a blunt in his hand at just the right time. You'd hope so, really, for 50 grand a year. You'd, you'd want, A, the blunts to be very high quality and, you know, for him to be there when you need him. Um, Snoop added timing that motherfucker's timing is impeccable that's his J-O-B his occupation on his resume it says what do you do I'm a blunt roller PBR professional blunt roller if you're great at something I need I'm hiring you that's the spirit Stern then asked how much money Snoop Snoop's PBR earned uh, that's somewhere between 40 and 50k a year, Snoop Doggy Dog said. He continued, free weed, all paid expenses, everything I get, he gets. Uh, I go get some free clothes, I give him some. Does sound like a decent gig. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't smoke the ganja, and I have not rolled a blunt in a long time. But it does sound like a cool job. Um, I mean, you could... <sighs> I could employ someone to rack up lines for me, but it, you know, it's probably not even a monthly affair now. I mean, it really would be very, very much part-time work. And and as with any work done for me, it really, the pay would be considerably lower than living wage. I mean, it really, I mean, once thing, when, you know, you take into the account the expenses and so on of getting places, you're going to have to buy your own drinks as well when we're out and you get around in as well. You're probably going to be at a loss, I'm going to say, because you're going to have to buy the gear. I don't buy gear. Jesus. I used to be a famous dubstep DJ. Christ, I don't buy my own gear. You mental. I just take the lines. I don't buy the lines. I don't create the lines. You create the lines. Basically, what I'm saying is, let's go out. You get the gear in. Yeah? That seems like a good deal, doesn't it? Seems all right to me. Um, Guys, let's talk about shoe throwers. What have we got today? few bits and bobs. Um, where are we? Uh, come on. New aggressor bunks. It's called mental process. Um, oisa. Oh, oh, oisa? I don't know what's going on there. Uh, auch uh, heute Nacht von uh, Misanthrop. This is a total geil tun. Um, total lecker. Hammer geil. Um, so play that. Uh, means tonight in uh, Deutsche. Uh, let's play that now. New misanthrop. Um, let's go. Thank you. 
Hey Beth, new girl at Big Maddie Wright's work. Welcome to the crew. That's really good. I really enjoyed that. That was great. I could listen to that again. Maybe let's listen to it again. No, maybe not. They will listen to it tomorrow. That's Hoyter Nacht. Hoyter Nacht uh, von Misanthrop. Misanthrop. It's on a neo signal. Don't know why it's in Italian. Who fucking knows? Who cares? It doesn't matter. We're all going to be dead soon. Um, got a uh, good bit here. Um, I've just realised I haven't logged into Facebook for a week, and there's all manner of treats in the Lobster Crew Facebook group. Um, so how about this beauty? Nurse, 22, caught behind the wheel while more than 29 times the ketamine limit. Now, the remarkable thing uh, for me on that is I was not aware that there was such a thing as a ketamine limit. I mean, I assumed that maybe any... But I suppose there has to be, doesn't there? Any Any amount of ketamine... Is that is that the limit? Like there must be zero ketamine in your system before you drive. That seems reasonable. I don't know. I mean, 
spatial awareness whilst on whilst on the wonk. I mean, that is the whole point of it, isn't it? That it completely fucks your spatial... I've taken ketamine before and have stood up off the sofa and have been talking like this because I'm worried I'm going to hit my chin on the ground. Like, that's not good, is it? Like, I wouldn't... I don't... I couldn't parallel park under those conditions. Make a good game show, wouldn't it? But it could be a spin-off of Danny Dyer's Parking with Geezers, which some of you may remember from, from the original series of Ranking Radio. The premise is Danny Dyer hosts a show whereby geezers, yeah, have to fucking park in stressful situations, yeah? So, like, you got to park at, like... Listen, Terry, right, I've got a naughty park job on for you today, mate. Car boot sale, yeah. There's only one parking space left, and it's fucking tiny. Yeah, you got to park the estate car with your missus in the front screaming at you, and the kids fucking about in the back. And you got to park it in there without knocking the wing mirrors. What fucking hell, Danny? I don't know, mate. That's gonna be a naughty one. Gee, Jesus Christ. And then, like the the final would be like trying to park a chieftain tank in Soho on a Friday night, something like that, or maybe like trying to park a <laughs> trying to park a pink Cadillac with raining it's raining men playing in like ISIS controlled Ramadi or something like that it's fuck Danny mate I don't know mate that is a naughty one that is fucking rascal they, they'll get me they'll fucking get me yeah <laughs> anyway it could be a spin off of that parking on Ketterman. Uh it was coming to channel 5 it's coming to the W channel uh, with that fucking Stacey Dooley program. Don't get me started. It's called Stacey Dooley Sleeps Over. It should be called Stacey Dooley Comes Around Your House, fucking behaves badly, gets in your face, pisses you off. It's ridiculous. She's a, she's a guest. She's a guest invited into people's homes and she comes into their houses and has a go at them. Fuck you, Dooley. Like, she without sin cast the first stone, yeah? You're out there slinging dick on Dancing with the Stars or whatever it is. Strictly, yeah. Well, you need to come into my house and call me a cunt for keeping women in cages. <laughs> Outrageous. She without sin, Dooley. She without sin. Anyway, this nurse. Nurse, 22, caught behind the wheel uh, while well, more than 29 times the ketamine limit. <laughs> Emma Roebuck of Stockport, uh, confirmed coffee and memes, good times gal. Uh, of Greater Manchester was caught drug driving three times in less than three months. Wow, she's a wild one. There ain't no taming her. Good luck, boys. Good luck. The trainee dental nurse. Okay, so that's a bit of a not not real nurse. Dental nurse. Receptionist. <laughs> Sorry. A uh, trainee dental nurse who drove after taking more than twenty nine times the ketamine limit has been banned from the roads. Emma Roebuck took the sedative before getting behind the wheel of her Peugeot 107. Fucking hell. Uh, after police pulled her over in Manchester City Centre in January, tests showed ketamine levels in her blood were more than 25 ti 29 times the limit for driving on the drug. Roebuck, from Leafy Bram Hall in Stockport, was arrested for the second time just five weeks later. In Stockport, after a passerby found her slumped in the driver's seat. Ah, oh, no, she's done a George Michael. Ah, oh, she's... Slagged the Range Rover into Snappy Snaps. Nightmare. They moved her into the passenger seat, fearing she would drive off. When police were investigating those incidents, Roebuck ploughed her Peugeot into the back of a car. Oh dear. Um, oopsie. Uh, she had been trying to read Google Maps on her phone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> try navigating... Try sitting on your... Try so sitting on your sofa at home and dealing with Google Maps whilst in a K-hole. All right. <laughs> no chance. A Mercedes A200. Oh, uh, Roebuck drove away as police travelled to the scene, but she crashed into two other vehicles. Oh, Jesus. Mercedes A200, a Seat Ibiza, a VW high up, uh, were damaged in the uh, incident near her former home in Hayfield, Derbyshire. Test shows she was more than four times the drug drive limit for ketamine, and almost twice the limit for diazepam. On the valleys as well. Oopsie. She's a valley girl. Roebuck admitted two charges of drug driving, possessing diazepam, and failing to stop after an accident. She was banned from the road for three years. That'd be like 25 years in precedent in the US. 
Um, yeah, she's a wild one. I should get her on the show. I mean, she's up probably, uh, she's probably got a bit of free time now. Maybe she'll want her own show. Roebuck was disqualified for 22 months for the first drug driving offence at a hearing in June. Uh, she has to get two buses to work. Oh, boo hoo. Boo fucking who? Some people have to get that just anyway. Some people don't have cars. Some people can't afford cars to drive while ketted up, crash into VWs and Mercedeses. Some people can't afford to behave like that. The court had the three incidents happen between January 29th and April 2nd. After Roebuck obtained the drugs while battling anxiety and depression. So you say. On the first occasion, she was stopped on Ducey Street in Manchester City Centre. Test showed ketamine levels in her blood of 591 micrograms per litre of blood. Driving limit for ketamine is 20 micrograms per litre of blood. Roebuck was released under investigation before being caught at the wheel of her car in Cheadle, Stockport, 9.15pm on March 2nd while under the influence of drugs. I mean, she just looks like your average millennial. I mean, is she Gen, Gen Z? Is that 22? Is that Gen Z now? Um, Victoria Newman... But she doesn't like. She doesn't look like a cat fiend, does she? I mean, sure. She, I'm sure she enjoys Boomtown as much as the rest of us. But uh, Victoria Newman, prosecuting, said police were called initially to reports of a drunk driver slumped at the wheel on Peugeot 107. A member of the public had moved the female over to the passenger side, as feared her driving away. Uh, just a removal of the keys would would do that. Police noticed the defendant was drowsy and under the influence of some substance, her eyes being glazed and slurring her words. I wonder if she had the polo meant ring of power around her nose. She was asked to take a seat in the police van but needed assistance of police to get over there. Uh, she was found to have a packet of blue tablets, which she admitted were diazepam. She said they were not prescribed to her, uh, but she just buys them and had taken one before driving. The last offence happened in April 2nd when police stopped her uh, at 10.20pm on New Mills, Derbyshire, just outside Stockport. So they've already gone to town this, on what presumably pictures taken from her public Facebook. Um, Ms Newman added, The witness said she was stationary in her car and waiting for traffic to pass uh, when her vehicle was struck from behind by the defendant's car. It was enough force to set off both the airbags. The witness got out of her vehicle and told the defendant not to move while she called 999. The witness was asking if she was okay. Uh, but the defendant then left the scene before the police arrived. She then came to a stop after colliding with two other vehicles, and the police and ambulance attended the scene. She was arrested on suspicion of possession of a controlled substance and a confirmation that ketamine, ketamine was in her system. This is a really long... St- got a, bit, a few more here. God, it goes on. Uh, she was ordered to complete a 12-month community order and enrol in six-month drug rehabilitation course. She must complete 180 hours of unpaid work. Oh, that's more than I got. Uh, I didn't crash any cars, though. <laughs> Just pingers and that. And pay costs and surcharge of 170 quid. I think you got off pretty lightly there, buddy. Got off pretty goddamn lightly. Right, well, let's have another let's have another flinger, actually. Let's have this aggressive bunks bit. Oh, lovely. Oh, Bunksy! Give it to me! <laughs> Thanks, uh, Bildo. I am now homeless. Uh, that five pounds will get me a bed for tonight. Will get me a bed and a two dabs of K. Just for the drive home.
Cheers, Chode. Do they still do white lightning? I thought they stopped making it. Or maybe that's Frosty Jacks. <laughs> <laughs>